February, February 2021. So this is traditionally auto show month. And uh, I'm looking forward to all the news that comes out around auto show time. However, in the meantime, we're going to talk about two cars that I think are underappreciated. And uh, we're going to talk about which one is best for you and which one you might like the best. So in front of us today, we have in the background, the Kia Soul EX Plus. Now that EX Plus, that plus makes a difference. We'll talk about why that is. And you have the Kia Forte 5 GT. Now, both of these are actually personal favorites of mine. I quite like both of them, and I quite like them for different reasons. So we're going to talk about what we like, what we maybe don't like, and that'll help you decide which one is best for you. So if you're just joining us and you're not live, we're going to spend a full half hour going through these two cars. We're going to show you in detail the differences between the two, some things you might like, some things you, won't, you may not like. So whichever one you like the best, we're going to get to the details. And if you have questions while you're live, you can join with us. If you are not live with us, feel free to skip ahead to that three minute mark. That's where we'll get going on the content. And in the meantime, I can show you how to join us and uh, how to join us live anyways. And uh, we'll also talk about any Kia news we have, which I have one thing I'm working on that I'm hoping will come together for me. All right, let me flip the camera around here and there we go. If you want to join us live, just head over to YouTube. You are probably already there. Just go to YouTube, search for Brantford Kia. So that's what we look like there. We're going to update this sometime this year, probably around the auto show time. And we're going to refresh that page exactly at 2 o'clock on a weekday. And you're going to see our live video right there on the home page. If you don't see it there, click this videos tab. It'll be the very first video. It'll have that little live tag. We're going to click in. Sometimes we get lucky like today and we don't have to watch an ad, which is kind of nice. I'm going to make this a little larger just so I can see it from across the room. Humberto says, please smash the like button. And that would be really great if you could do that for me. Uh, it helps me out a lot. And um, it also just, you know, uh, you know, it's not a whole big time commitment. You guys hit click and we're good to go. All right, let's talk about the news. Let me get something with a background so it's not a window you can see me. All right, I am still hoping to see the Kia, um, Kia K5 GT. So that is the turbo model that I have not seen yet. Normally on a normal year, uh, all of us go see these cars before they end up at the dealer. But because it's COVID, we can't just grab people from all sorts of different stores and go see them. So I'm a little like you. I know things about this car, but I haven't seen it in person yet. So I'm hoping to have that car here this year, or this year, this week. And uh, we also have a Kia Stinger on the lot. And I think that would be a great comparison video between those two cars because uh, there's a lot to share. And I will have driven the car before it comes here. So we're going to put about 30 kilometers on that car. And that'll be me putting the 30 kilometers on the Forte K, sorry, the Kia K5 GT. Uh, so I'll have a good sense of how it drives compared to something like the Kia Stinger. So that's what's coming up this week. And uh, we're still trying to figure out what's going to go for auto show time. Uh, I'm going to mix sort of what I do to complement what Kia does. So I'm going to try to find out what they're doing. And uh, we're just going to add to what they're doing. Of course, they'll be the main event. And we'll comment on what's going on and uh, hopefully fill in some details if necessary. That's what's going on. Those of you that skipped to the three-minute mark, I apologize for going about 15 seconds over time there. All right. Today we are talking about two cars that I really like. And they are underappreciated for various reasons. Um, the Kia Forte 5 GT is a very underappreciated car because, first of all, the Kia Forte 5 is unavailable in the United States, and that makes it um, something that people don't always hear about. Most automotive media in Canada, or at least a lot of it, comes from the United States, and um, they don't just they just don't talk about this car a ton. So we're going to talk about this car because I love it. Uh, this one happens to be the GT version, and it is a very fun to drive car. And I think that's really missing from the economy car segment right now. I think everybody's so focused on economy that they kind of forget it's just fun to have a fun to drive car. And it really changes when you hop in. We're also going to talk about basically the car I own. Now, I happen to own an electric vehicle version of the Kia Soul. Uh, but take out the powertrain. Not everybody uh, wants an electric powertrain right now. This is an excellent car from LED headlights to great comfort inside, great seating position, uh, good cargo space. It's just a really good car. So the difference between these two cars is almost everybody who comes to me and says, what car should I get? Um, if they don't need a big, big, big car, I almost always mention the Soul. Just drive the Soul, see if you like the Soul. Not everybody loves its styling, but they get inside, and a lot of people who don't love the styling of the Soul end up leaving here in a Kia Soul because it makes sense for what they want. It makes sense for their budget. It's great fuel efficiency, all sorts of reasons. This is a car I recommend a lot less because whether you're older or younger, uh, whether you've got a kid or two or not, the Soul is just something I really recommend. 
this car here, maybe this is my ageism coming through. I don't tend to recommend older people. It's just a little lower. It's a little more focused. Um, there are some people that are older than me that absolutely drive this car and love it because this was what I grew up with in the European sports sedan kind of segment. When you look at power, this would be class leading power back then. Uh, features, way more features than that. So it's kind of a you know generation previous European sports sedan in a new modern vehicle with a great warranty and all that kind of stuff. And in that case, it makes sense. However, everybody moves to SUVs and the soul feels like an SUV from inside. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So in the next 25 minutes or so, we're gonna go driver's seat to driver's seat. We're gonna compare features. We're gonna go trunk space to trunk space. We'll hop in the rear seat. We'll show you the rear seat space difference between the two. We're gonna talk about some of the features. Uh, we're gonna show LED lighting on both of them. We're gonna talk about the powertrain as well. But first, we're gonna set you up with letting you know where these cars are in our lineup. So let me just jump over back to my computer for just a couple seconds here. All right, Kia Soul. Kia Soul is available in a variety of trims. There's an LX, an EX, an EX Plus, and an EX Premium, and a GT Line Limited, and that's it for 2021. So they, they used to have a couple extra high-end trims. The EX Plus, two cars above, two cars below, it's smack in the middle. It is 24,000. 995 is the MSRP, and you can see that's the one where you step up to the LED headlights, LED fog lights, LED tail lights, uh, and you get a sunroof, and you get the artificial leather and cloth seats. I think that's the trim to move to if you can spring for it. I'm not saying you have to. If it's out of your budget, don't let me talk you into something that you're not ready for. However, if you can jump into at least this level, getting those LED lights, I think, is worth it. They are really, really good for the class, and I think it makes sense. And that really puts it on par with this car, which also has LED lights. However, this car has a different engine and different transmission. You can get the Soul and the Forte 5 with the same engine, and we're going to show you that right now, right here just so you know where we're at today. The Forte 5 is available as an EX, a GT manual transmission, a GT, and a GT Limited. Today we have the GT automatic transmission. It's 27,595, so it does cost more than the Soul. However, you can also get down to the EX model, which has the same engine and transmission as the Soul, and it costs less than the Soul. You wanna get right in the same $100 range as the Soul, you gotta go manual transmission. And you may or may find that that makes sense for you or not. But you can go a little less, same engine transmission. You can go a little more, step up the engine transmission. And you've got 201 horsepower here, which makes a big difference compared to the 147 or so, 147 of the Kia Soul. So you do have a performance upgrade for that price. Now let's take a look. We're going to start in the Kia Soul. A couple things that when you drive right into the driver's seat here, a couple things that you don't notice in a video or in a picture or anything else, this square and boxy styling kind of has a really nice benefit right there. We're going to show you a difference in the Forte, but you won't be able to see it as well. Let me just flip the camera around. When you get in, in a modern sedan and in a modern, many times SUV, let me just turn that off for a second. You end up with a pillar here that comes a little closer to your head and it feels just a little bit smaller, feels a little bit tighter in here. The Kia Soul is in some cases like driving a full-size pickup truck. And that's where I think people are really blown away by it, is they pull in here and maybe a full-size pickup truck and the space around their head feels like it's very roomy. Now this is of course not as big as that uh, full-size pickup truck, but the idea is the windshield is about as far away from you as that. The pillars don't come creeping in, you know, as they aerodynamic styling pulls it down here. Now it's still very aerodynamic. It's, the funny thing about aerodynamics is everybody thinks an egg shape is aerodynamic and everything else is not. Uh, the reality is this car is still very aerodynamic the way it is. And we measure that in coefficient of drag, and we can look up that some other time. Um, oops, let me just turn the radio off. My outside light just turned off because it's on motion sensors, and I have a car blocking the motion sensor. So when you hop in here, I want to show you a few things first. Let's flip the camera back around. Of course, we've turned the car to the on position, but we haven't started it. So you're going to see all kinds of different things in here. Uh, ignore the fuel efficiency. This car has been idling outside, so that is not an accurate representation of fuel efficiency. Uh, but let me just show you some of the things you can see here. You've got just your speedometer as a digital speedometer. You've got driver attention warning. You've got lane keeping assist, and you've got tire pressure monitors all in this car. That's kind of standard stuff uh, for most of the Kias now. Driver assistance things, so things like lane keep, those kind of things, all sorts of settings in here. You can do all kinds of different things in the menu. But the point is you have a really good menu in the center of the screen there which gives you good information. And you're gonna see some similarities between these two cars and that kind of look. Um, overall, there's a clean look to your layout there, nice and easy to see. You have an eight inch screen here. Now this eight inch screen, 
Actually, this one might be a seven inch screen. I don't know, we'll have to compare. But you have a good size uh, screen here. You've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now remember when I said moving to that um, LED lighting thing is a nice thing. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is something you're just gonna want no matter what car you get. You can pretty much get it in every Kia now. And it makes a big difference because you've got the ability to throw navigation on here. So anywhere you go, if your cell phone is on you and you have a, even a basic data plan, you can get navigation right here in your Kia Soul or in your Kia Forte, Kia Forte 5, um, you know, even Kia Rio, anything. So that's a big important thing. And it's a nice, clear, good display screen. And when I show clarity, I like to show the backup camera. Anytime you're filming a screen, which is what I'm doing, I'm using this camera to film that screen. Uh, that's a really poor way to show clarity. But you can see even when I'm filming here, uh, the lines in the door, the lines in the wheels of the uh, Forte there and the lines in the floor are all very, very clear. And interestingly, the lights turned off in this room. So it's actually darker than you think. And I know the camera's going to adapt, but you can see headlights are certainly very bright over there. Um, that, again, just shows the clarity of the camera able to adjust there and show everything. So you've got really good clarity. And then the other thing that's really good about the Soul is, let me just flip around. As I look around this car, oh, you can see the sunroof. We're going to talk about that in a second. As you look around the car, you can see that there's good visibility in the windows there. Now, of course, I'm not looking that way. I'm looking the other way. Um, what I like about the Soul is, and hatchbacks in general, which we'll talk about the 45, the uh, visibility is excellent here. It's hard to show you here. But also, that window is the back of your car. So when you're backing up, you don't just need the backup camera. You can also feel very comfortable with the windows. And one of the things that's interesting about modern cars that people don't talk about is when visibility is tight in the back, everybody says, oh, yeah, but you're fine. You've got a backup camera. Well, in these cars, there's a subconscious thing that I just feel safer when I can actually see the world around me. And it's true. You are safer when you can see around. It's not just the digital things that keep you safe. Speaking of digital things that will help you keep you safe, let's talk about the blind spot detection. You see a little uh, in the mirror there, that little icon there. These mirrors are not very clean. I apologize. Uh, but that little icon, of course, will light up orange when someone's in your blind spot. And let's talk for a real quick second about lane keeping assist. So we're gonna turn that on here. Oops, you can see it there in the center of the dash. That will go green um, as you, uh, as the car finds a lane above 60 kilometers an hour. And what it does is it, is it actively steers your car to keep you centered in the lane. And a lot of people seem to be really freaked out by that. But when we talk about Tesla vehicles and the initial autopilot, that's what it did. It just kept you centered in the lane. You still have to steer. You have to keep your hand on the wheel. But you'll find a little gentle nudge in the wheel, and it keeps you dead centered in the wheel. So are we losing, you guys? Humberto says we've lost it. Can you guys still hear me? Are you good? How are we doing? Let me know because, okay, we're all still good. Okay. So you'll see that sometimes when these cars are capable of steering themselves, that can be an intimidating thing, but it's actually a very, very good thing. Some of the competitors' lane keep assist systems, they vibrate the wheel aggressively when you touch the lane marker. So that adds an extra level of stress to your driving because you want to make sure you're staying dead center. Whereas this car, two fingers on the wheel on a highway trip or something, and the car stays dead center in the lane. And it's funny now that I drive a car without it and with it, um, you don't notice how much you kind of weave through the lane a little bit. Um, in a car like this, it'll stay dead center in the lane. And both of these cars have that. So it's kind of a nice feature. Come down here, just want to show you manual climate control on the Soul. So that's uh, just an interesting thing. Uh, we've got LED lighting, which I just turned on by opening the door. You've got a little wireless phone charging pad down here. So you can put your phone there to charge. And you've got another little rubbery pad down here just for your things. USB port, USB port, and a 12 volt port. If you want to plug into Android Auto Apple CarPlay, you're plugging into the center one there. Heated seats, two levels of heated seats on most Kia Souls. And I like to call them rub posters. And I'm going to leave that on because it's actually nice. And a steering wheel heater as well. So again, pretty common stuff. Drive modes in this car, you have a normal and a sport mode. And that's it. That's probably all you need. Um, there is the ability to manually shift this car. You tap it this way and you can shift through eight gear ratios like that. Although it is an IVT or CVT transmission, um, which is great for fuel efficiency, which we're going to talk about in one second. As I pop back out of this car, I want to show you a couple little things. Uh, we're going to get the headlights to turn on later. So I'll set them up. As I pop back out, I want to show you the seats here. It's a really nice mix on this trim level with the, like I said, artificial leather. It says sole on there and you get cloth as well. I'm a big cloth seats fan, and I really like the way these seats have that nice, rich looking leather. It's got good bolstering. You sit a little taller in the sole, so much like an SUV, but the cloth seats, um, I was with somebody the other day who drove in a vehicle similar to mine, and it had leather seats, 
He's like, my seats don't warm up like yours. And I go, yeah, they do. Just you didn't get the cloth seats. Leather is colder in the winter. And this is nice. Cloth and leather mix. So taller seat. Now let's take a look at the Forte 5. What I'm going to do is walk awkwardly around this car for a second. Because I want to get that light to turn on again in this room. My camera's compensating for it. But uh, there we go. Okay. When you hop in this car, there's a difference. That one's a key start. This one, again, steps up a little bit. It is a push button start, which means you have a push button on the door. So again, slight price increase for the um, more powerful engine, but you're still getting a few more features in here as well. Again, same idea with that cloth leather mix here. This one's got some red uh, piping on there, nice tall bolstering, taller bolstering here, a little bit lower seat and the cloth in there, and nice stitching on the seat that makes it look sporty. The GT is all about sports. It is fun. And uh, somebody said they drove by our dealership. They didn't see the stinger outside. Nope, it's outside. It's out front. All right, let me just uh, throw it in here. As you get into this car, you're going to sit lower, but you feel like you're in a sports car. So you feel a lot more connected to it. And again, that push button start. So we're just going to turn it to on. Same type of display here in the center. Nice uh, digital display there. We just showed you all the things. Same thing with the fuel efficiency. Ignore it because this car has been idling. Uh, let me just zoom in though. A little bit more features in here. You're going to see there's the speedometer. There's your drive modes, which is kind of nice. You have more drive modes here, so I can cycle through. Normal, sport, and smart. I like the smart mode myself. We'll talk about why. And then again, you have down here a transmission temperature. Again, just a little bit of extra sport uh, features. Over here, lane key, uh, driver attention warning, which in this case is off right now, and tired uh, pressure. And then same type of system down here. So a little bit extra detail in there because they can with the... Um, in addition to the speedometer, you have the temperature and the drive mode situation. And then over here, let's just zoom out for a second. Same display screen. Now, I believe this one's bigger. This is an eight inch screen. So this one, that one is a seven inch. This one's an eight inch. Um, nice clarity here. Very much Kia Stinger like. Comes out of the dash like the Kia Stinger. And really the feeling in this car is very much of a Kia Stinger type feel. Uh, you have the satellite radio in addition to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So you're adding satellite radio. Again, not just power you're adding, you get the satellite ready as well. You get the same type of clear backup camera. You can see the lines in the floor, good coloring. Uh, scrolling down here, a dual zone automatic climate control. So again, you're not just moving up in price to get the power. Uh, you're also getting a few extra features. Now there's some glare on the screen. There we go. Try to get the glare out. So one little trick about the camera, when you're looking at something with two eyes, you see much less glare than the camera, which looks at it with one eye. It's just uh, sort of the way your eyes work. So uh, not a whole lot of glare. In fact, no real glare at all from the driver's seat here, but on this camera, you'll see some glare. But the dual temperature control is nice. You can just choose right side and left side, different um, temperatures there if I wanted to do that. And you can sync them together as well. Scrolling down a little further, wireless charge pad, exactly the same. USB ports, USB port, and 12 volt port, same thing there. Instead of having two levels of rump roasting, you have the ability to rump roast to three different levels, which is kind of nice. Heated steering wheel as well. In this car, we talked about the drive modes. And the passenger seat, of course, also has those three levels of rump roasting abilities. So the other thing you get is a dual clutch transmission. So this is a fast shifting and ooh, look at how dirty that is. I have to wipe that off better. Anyways, this is a fast shifting and uh, the ability to go manual shift. And as soon as on this car, when you shift it into um, manual here, like it's what I'm doing right there. It does change the drive mode. That does not happen on the sole. So it's in smart mode now. I'm tapping the gear shift to the left. It jumps over to, sp to smart mode there. So kind of a cool feature there where you can manually shift the gears on a dual clutch transmission. Now, if you want to manually shift the gears, the other way to do it is through your paddle shifters here. So paddle shifters are available. This car, the one thing that people don't mention in this car, um, and they don't really uh, mention this class, is this car is legitimately fun to drive. You get in and it it just from the start, wow, this car is fun. It's got a little bit more loud exhaust, not a real noisy exhaust, but just some character to the noise, to the sound, uh, and it's better. You still have a sunroof here, and you can see what I'm talking about here with the sole. If you want a little bit more space, this comes kind of leans back. Uh, what's cool about this is it has a black headliner, so very much like the Kia Stinger when they do the higher end, uh, um, the higher trim headliner, it's a softer touch on the Stinger, but they go with that black headliner. It gives you that sort of Stinger-esque kind of feel. And again, not that much more than the Soul we just looked at, and basically the same price as some of the Souls. Um, but again, you're getting that more powerful engine as well. Looking across the dash here as well, uh, we'll come back to the steering wheel. I should point out the Kia Soul and Kia Forte 5 have the same type of uh, layout here, or same features here, but different layout. 
So same uh, type thing for cruise control. This controls that um, center display that we were playing with there. Audio and uh, Bluetooth controls right here. And we're gonna turn on the automatic headlights here because we're gonna take a look at the lights right now. And we'll leave this car on to do that. Blind spot detection, same type of thing here. Lane keep assist, same type of thing here. Now, I will say, lane keep assist, that is one feature that on most cars, I tell people, leave it on for a week, get used to it, and almost everybody loves it. This is the only car I turn it off in every now and then because you can just hug the corner. Sometimes you don't always want to be centered in that lane when you're going around that corner. You want to just hug the corner a little bit left and right. This car is not about overall power. Now, I'm not supposed to really talk about other makes. Too. Well, nobody said I'm not supposed to do anything. I can make up my own rules. I will talk about another make. The Mazda Miata is one of the best driving cars out there. It's not overly powerful, but it is fun. Just the Miata, not the other cars. The other cars, they try to pretend like they're Miatas. They're not. This car is legitimately fun, and it's not all about the power. It corners very well. It holds a line. It's powered very well. It's got good torque. And the thing with our turbo engines is you get all of that torque, 195 foot-pounds of torque, from about 14, 1700 RPM. I can't remember. It's somewhere in that range. We'll double check. But you get it all the way through to over 4,000 RPM. So you end up with maximum torque right where you need it, and it makes it fun to drive in addition to its cornering abilities. So it's not all about maximum power. Some people tell me, oh, I wish they could throw the 2.5 liter uh, turbo engine that's in the Sorento in this thing, which would be cool, but you'd spin the front tires right off. This car is all about balance and power, and it is a lot of fun to drive, uh, even if it's not like 700 horsepower speed or like the Stinger is much, much faster. Uh, this car is equally fun to drive, just not quite as fast as a Stinger, but certainly faster than most cars on the road uh, today. So let's keep the lights on. We're going to zip out there. I'm going to take your questions in a second here, and then we're going to go trunk space and rear seat space. Now, you can see both these cars. This one's got the headlights on. See that sharp, sharp cutoff? So in the lower trim Fortes, you have a high beam and a low beam that is separate. This high beam and low beam is all the same um, area. So you have that X pattern, which are LED lights that are on all the time. And then you have the really bright, really bright headlights. Now you'll notice the daytime running light can flicker a little bit, but that is a super bright headlight. And what's great about it is because it has this sharp cutoff like this, it's not going to get in anybody's eyes. Now, it's not like you have like a Ford F-150 where the headlights are super high and they're always in your eyes. Sharp cut off, bright white light gives you daylight type color at night and you can really see what's going on at night. Now, let's turn the headlights on here again. Oh, the car's off. Let me just go to the, this one, I'm turning the key real quick. Headlights on, fog lights on. Now, one thing about the Kia Forte 5 GT, does not have fog lights. Does it matter? I don't think so. You can see it's got good even spread. It's kind of hard to show on the camera. You can see here, fog lights and headlights, kind of the same even spread. You can see a little different. It looks like it's different color on our camera here. That's just the way the camera adapts to the brightness of the lights here. But you still have an LED lighting over here. Like I said, if you can spring forward on the Seltos or the Kia Soul, you can get LED lights or not LED lights. And I strongly recommend going with the LED lights if you can spring forward, just because there's so much um, more modern lights. They are very bright. Uh, they are excellent at night, and the color makes everything easier to see as well at night. So you've got that in the front. Now, two of these cars, because once you go right into the LED lighting on the sole, you also get upgraded rear lighting here, and you get a better design here. So you have your brake lights through there. They're a single bright light in the center, but at night, when you just your taillights are on, it looks like that. Now, speaking of great design on here, you've got Great design on the Forte rear lights as well. Forte 5 has these awesome looking lights back here. This one's got the dual exhaust down low. This car looks fantastic from the rear and uh, it looks like a much higher end car. And I just am a big fan of the way they did the LED light on these two cars. I think it looks better than even something like 2021 Sorento. They uh, sort of did what somebody called the Lego block look on the new Sorento. I don't mind it. I think it looks good, um, but this is probably the best ones we have right now for that. All right, 28 of you are still on right now. I've got 16 likes. I'm trying to get to 30 likes today. So if you guys want to hit the like button, that's all I ask. We're going to take your questions right now before we move to the trunk space and the rear seat space. So I'm going to look uh, beside me here as I take your questions. Let me just see if there's anything I missed. Can you describe the size difference between the Soul and the Sportage? Sportage is a larger vehicle than the Kia Soul. Um, it's going to be taller. It's going to be longer. It's going to be wider. It's bigger in every direction. Uh, the biggest thing is you get is a rear, um, a bigger rear seat, or sorry, bigger trunk space. And the Sportage has a reclining back seat that the Soul doesn't have. Features wise are very similar. And of course, the Sportage is available with four wheel drive or all wheel drive, excuse me. 
So what has improved and changed for the Forte 5 from the 2020 model? A uh, big thing is you can get a uh, manual transmission in the GT, which I think is a really good price point for that manual transmission. Uh, I keep bugging our general manager to stock one. He's not ready to do that quite yet in the year. Uh, although if one of you want to buy it, we will bring it in and I'll have a video for you guys. So um, that's a big difference there. Uh, if it has five doors, I like them all, says Umberto. That's, uh, that's pretty much fair. I'm the same sort of way. All right, let's keep going in. What we're going to do is trunks, or oops, let me flip this around. Uh, rear seat space, we always know the soul of the champ for that. It's one of the best in its class. It is excellent for legroom, headroom, everything. So we're going to compare best in class, which is the Kia Soul, uh, at least my opinion, best in class. I don't know about the exact measurements, but you can argue with me all you want about uh, if there's something better. Oops, I flipped, meant to flip the camera around. You can see here, six feet tall, there's just immense space, tons of it. Uh, you got an armrest that falls properly to where you need it. It doesn't fall flat to the floor or to the seat there. It's really good. And the other thing I really like is, if you can see my legs here, they are just sitting here. I am comfortable. I can move my legs around. I'm flat on the seat. I'm raised up, which isn't something you always get on a small car. This is mid-size space, uh, mid-size SUV space even, in a small compact car. The Soul is a shorter vehicle uh, than the Forte in the Forte 5. Coming down here, no vents here. That's okay. There's vents underneath the seat, but you do have a USB port, and the passenger side has a pocket, not the driver's side. There is a small door pocket there as well. The cup holders here are in the center armrest. Uh, if you move up in the sole trim level, you can get heated rear seats. Um, I believe so. I haven't checked that spec, actually. I'm pretty sure you can still get that. Um, but nice design details here. And the other thing I really like, some of our SUVs have hard, um, especially the same price point, they have hard armrests, and we have soft armrests here on the sole. So really nice feature there. We're going to jump into the Forte 5 now, which, again, is going to be a little bit less space, but let's see how much less space because this car is excellent. Something like the Mazda 3 is very, very tight compared to this car. I'm gonna show you me as I get in because again, it's a lower roof line, so how hard is it to get in here? It's pretty easy. You do sit a little bit lower. Uh, you sort of carved out here some extra space. So the sunroof comes back inside the roof, and then as soon as I have tons of like space here, you've got not as much as the sole, but again, I'm six feet tall, and there's all kinds of room above my head. There's plenty of room back here. Now, down here, Let's just show you if we can. Camera don't tip over. My legs are still pretty good. They're a little bit off the seat, but I'm still pretty good. I'll notice because I'm wearing my winter boots today, there's a little less space underneath the seat in front of me for my winter boots, but I can still put my toes underneath there easily. If I was wearing normal size shoes, it would fit very well. Still have an armrest here as well. Let me just flop that down for a second. It falls exactly where you need it as well. Cup holders in there. And let's flip a camera around for a second. You have, whoops, put the armrest out of the way for a second. You have a netted pocket right here. So same idea here. Plastic back seating, so they're easy to wipe down if you've got kids back here. You do have vents back here. You do not have the port back here. So you can sort of take your uh, pick. One's got the port, one's got the vents, uh, whatever you need here. And again, plastic back seat on there. What I like over here is a little bit better space for a bottle holder in this car. And again, that nice red stitching comes through on the GT soft armrest there as well so both are very comfortable vehicles for four you know four passengers for sure five passengers if you want to uh, i'm just going to turn both these cars off for a second so i'm not draining the batteries on them and automatic headlights i should probably have mentioned that and there we go cars off next up is the teddy bear test those of you that have never seen the teddy bear test teddy bear is my friend he uh, appears in most videos of mine and he's a good way to measure trunk space because a lot of companies will give you specs and I'm not sure how they pour sand or water into these vehicles. You and I both know they do computer measurements that will tell you the volume of one trunk is considerably larger to the other. Well, volume means nothing if it's not usable volume. A little cubby space where you can't actually put anything in does not help you. Here's where we're gonna talk about the Forte 5 being amazing for trunk space. All right, let's flip it around. Forte 5 over there. First of all, you get the big, huge opening. You could pull that panel out of here and you have that whole big opening. Currently, I'm just gonna throw these floor mats on the ground. This is the best hatchback in the automotive industry today for silly little reasons that nobody's thought of yet. Over here, see a little tab there? You're gonna pull that up. As we do that, there's a little spot back there where it has little um, Velcro adjustable things to hold something, you can know, maybe like a umbrella or something like that. You can strap it in there. Why would you want to strap it in there? 
because you're going to be driving athletically. Over here, same idea, but those are little stretchy straps that are going to do the same thing. You can stretch them, hold something. Speaking of holding things down, that is your cargo net. That's going to click on to there, there, here, and there, and hold everything flat to your trunk where it's dead center. It won't fly around. But there's more to this trick here. You can take this panel here, raise it up like this, and if I can get it like that, clip it into that with one hand, it's a little easier with two hands, and you can see down here, you've got a plastic outside container right there and a styrofoam in here. You just went swimming, throw your swim trunks in there. You just went to work out in the gym, throw your shoes in there, throw your sweaty clothes in there. It's not gonna stink up your whole hatchback because again, the hatchback is open to the car. It's not gonna stink everything up because you've got tons of space down here. Now you're going camping. And you wanna take a little bit extra stuff? There's another spot right there to fit even more things and the inflator that's part of your tire kit inflator, you could probably use that to blow up your air mattress. So underfloor storage, under underfloor storage, and you can get to everything easily by flipping that floor up. You've also got little things that are sort of hidden here, little grocery uh, bag hooks. So if you've got grocery bags, you can throw it there. They won't spill your soups or your oranges or your apples or whatever you carry around. Really practical hatchback, the best practical hatch in the industry, and it's pretty big. If you're looking at something like a Kia Seltos because you want a hatchback that has a lot of floor space, sometimes uh, hatchbacks and SUVs are tall, but you need that floor space. You've got good floor space here. Teddy's belly is gonna touch this, but that will collapse in there. And again, you can take that out and fit an oversized box. We fit boxes in here that have no way fitting in the Forte easily fit in the Forte 5 with the seats up. And uh, so you do have that feature here. And again, this hatchback arrangement is not just the GT. If you just wanna go with the EX, same type of thing like that. Now let's go over here to the Soul. The Soul has a few tricks in its sleeve too. Again, big square opening. So square opening, you can fit large things in there. You can fold the seats down. We all know how that works. I'm gonna take the mats out of here as well. Same thing with tie downs. You don't get a custom uh, uh, cargo net for, uh, for the sole, although you could pick one up as an accessory, uh, but you could tie things down there. The sole also has underfloor storage. This one's got a little tire down there. Uh, that might not be put away correctly, but we're gonna try one thing real quickly. The sole has the ability to drop down and lower like that. So now you've got, I'd say six inches, quite a bit more space. It was sitting up here level with here and now it's all the way down there and you can see how easy that was to drop what that does is my wife uses that down there when she does her grocery shopping so nothing falls out the back the reason you would want it higher up is because when it's higher up it's level with the floor here and when the seats flop forward you have a level float load floor onto the seat so when you're pushing something large into there um it goes onto those seats that are folded down right now if i was to fold them there would be a little step up over there let's throw teddy back here and we'll show you how he fits a little bit less floor length in here, but obviously a deeper floor the way it's set up. So again, you saw Teddy Bear in the past. His tummy was touching the top of the Forte 5. You can see the height here is significant. A little bit less floor space, but still pretty good. Teddy's tucked in there, not as much floor space from here on out to there, uh, but he's pretty comfortable. And the same type of features over here, a little grocery bag hook right over there. Uh, on this side, you only have one on this one instead of the two but you do have pretty good and pretty functional trunk space. Two little hatchbacks, one very sporty, one a little bit taller, maybe a slight bit more comfortable for some, although both are very comfortable. You have an option of either one. Uh, fuel efficiency is the other thing because they have different engines. Uh, let's talk about that really quickly. Fuel efficiency, 8.5 and seven liters per hundred kilometers, city and highway, 8.5 and seven. You're gonna get a little bit worse in the city on the Forte 5 GT and a little bit better on the highway. So let's just show you there, 8.9, 6.9. They are both, actually the Soul is 7.8 overall. This one's 7.9 overall. So basically the same fuel efficiency, if anyone you want. <laughs> Robert said, get Teddy, and he's right. I just locked Teddy in the trunk. So you're right, Robert, if I don't have him tomorrow, he's in that Soul. Uh, but I just wanna show these vehicles profile again. If you want something a little sporty, a couple more luxury thing, things like the dual, um, zone temperature control, Forte 5 is your call. The other thing with the Forte 5, it feels fun to drive. So many cars are purely appliances right now. They're not, you know, they've gone down to fuel efficiency only. Soul has always been funky. It's fun in a different way. It's kind of cheerful, happy, 
super comfortable, always great to take your friends in. And uh, there we go. Once it's paid off, he'll be the sole owner. <laughs> uh, so there you go. So right here, fun to drive. Just flat out fun, underrated, a must add uh, drive if you want to drive that. And then over there, you end up with something that's similar price point. If you want to go in the same area, you can get similar price point, similar features, similar safety features, just a different packaging to get different things. Somebody asked, did I just do a K5 uh, review? I did. Uh, I have done uh, every review. So search our YouTube channel for everything you want. Uh, we have a uh, Kia K5 GT arriving, what I'm expecting as early as tomorrow, but it, we're expecting it for sure this week. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to compare that to the Stinger actually as well. So a lot of K5 content coming up this week. Uh, it's February. It's auto show month. When the auto show introduces anything, even if it is a virtual auto show, we're going to talk about it here. So do me a favor, guys. There's still 30 of you on. Hit that like button for me. It really helps me out. It takes you like two seconds to just really reach over and go click on the like button. Uh, it takes me a little bit more than that to prepare for these. I even had to wash a car by myself today. So do me a favor. Hit that like button. And uh, we're going to do more of these for you. I'm just going to see if there's any questions I missed. Otherwise, that we're going to jump back in. Tow packages, are they installed at the factory or the dealership? So in these two cars, are not rated to tow in Canada. Uh, if you are from somewhere else, we can talk about that, um, how that is in different cars. Uh, tow packages are generally, um, we, we install a hitch here. A lot of the SUVs are set up to tow um, or set up pre-wired for trailer wiring. How come the 45 doesn't have cooled seats, electric seats, rear heated seats? Okay, good question. The Forte 5 we're showing you today is just the GT. It's not the GT Limited. GT Limited has the ventilated seats, heated rear seats, those kind of things. So to be honest, this is the one I would get. Um, I like the cloth seats. Um, I feel like this is the sport car with none of the added luxury. Although if you are someone who wants the added luxury, by all means, the GT Limited is your car. Uh, it is uh, a step up from this one. Looks the same on the outside, but there we go. Um, did click the like. Thank you. Okay, what else we got? Um... Uh, da, 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 da. Did I review the K5? Yes, and I will do more K5 this week. Fredericton Kia is here. Hey, if you're out in Fredericton, you should go chat with them. They'll help you out. That's uh, sort of a friend of ours. What else we got? Is the wheelbase of, is the, wheelbase of the 4T5 longer than regular hatchbacks or sedans? It certainly looks sleeker than other hatchbacks. I believe the wheelbase is the same, but the length is different. I, because I've gone so long, I don't want to check that. It is in the spec side of the Kia thing. The length is shorter. But I think the wheelbase is the same. If we were shorter in the video, I would have done that earlier. So check the Kia.ca website. That's the best place to go. Um, it'll just be right um, in the specs side right there on the Kia website. So that's the best place to check that. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it right there. We are back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Certainly willing to take more questions. If you have questions, uh, once this video is posted, just uh, keep uh, filling the comment section there. I'll keep answering, and we'll go from there. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see you again tomorrow, hopefully. K5 GT versus Stinger. That will happen this week. I can't promise that K5 will be here, but we're putting pressure to try to get that. It sounds like it's very, very close. Uh, so we'll have lots of stuff this week. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and we'll talk to you soon.